Hello, welcome to Modelers with their models. And today I have Jack again. I'm back with my Tamir Mercedes 300 SL. So How good is it? it, it everyone loves this car. It's, it's such a classic. Isn't it? It's very iconic. So we're talking 1950s, aren't we? 1955, 55. I believe, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So 300SL Goldwing. Yeah. And I think this is one of the more popular Tamir kits as well. For sure. Everyone loves this car. And it's, gonna be, it's a really good kit. I'm going to be very careful handling this because I've got all the panels open and is, such. Yeah. It does have opening doors and opening bonnet, as you can see. Yeah, so there's a lot to this. I, yeah. From memory, you, the chassis is also you multiple frame, piece, right? Yeah. 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 You build okay. the frame up, you build the drivetrain. All right, I'm just going to try and zoom in without touching the model too much, but let's have a, a close look at the, the engine. And you can see all the way through it. Okay, so there's quite a bit there. It looks like a space frame. Chassis, is it? Uh, yeah, I think that's what they call it, yeah. Oh, look, you also got the fan there. So yeah. is this straight out of the kit? It has the hobby design photo edge set. Oh, so that's so that fan? Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's photo edge. Oh, all right. Bit, yeah. How extensive is it? How many bits uh, of, of the photo which is there? Quite, like, the set's not super comprehensive, but you get, you get like, the, the front uh, mesh. You get uh, bits of the interior, like, the locks for the, the doors. And you get the radiator shroud. You get the fan. You get so, bits and pieces. So when you say the locks, you mean these bits? Yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. okay. That's an extra bit of detail that's not in the kit. So it's totally flat, is it? Actually, I think there is a little bit of Oop. <laughs> a bit of raised detail. Uh, we'll get that back up later. But it's not it's not as nice as with the photo etch. And with, with the photo etch, you get that bare metal look. And there's, okay. there's also some speakers sort of in the door card. Oh, yeah, I can see can that see. there. Yeah, yes. there's a bit of photo etch. Okay. On the inside of the door as well, there's, uh, if you can see, <laughs> if you can angle uh, I've a bit hard. Let's see. There's I'm bits of photo etch. It. Is that there? Yeah, there's. you can see bits of photo etch there. Oh, yeah, okay, there yes. Go. Yeah. <laughs> what about all those rivets? Yeah, that's photo etch. Oh, that's photo etch, yeah. is it? Oh, yeah. wow, okay. All right. Okay, so let's talk about the basic construction of the kit. I mean, being a Tamir kit, you expect it to do, yeah. sort of fall together, I, right? Yeah, I was a bit um, sort of hesitant to start this one reading through the instructions just because it looked really detailed, I thought it would take me forever, but I actually built it pretty quickly and it just fell together as Tamiya kids usually do, which is a nice surprise. Mm. It's, a bit, it's a bit to it, particularly the opening gold wings as well. Yeah, I mean, with Tamiya kids, they're engineered really well, so it's actually not that hard to put together. The way it's designed makes sense. Did you find it difficult to color match? Because I find that when panels are separate, Making sure you get the even number of coats on everything, so when it all closes up, is difficult. I mean, I, d I don't think so. No? I don't think I had any issues. Okay. All right, so as as a typical a... Tamiya kit that's gone together yeah. really well. Is there going to be any issues if I spin this upside down? Hopefully not. No? <laughs> all right, let's, let's try to hold it together like this. All right, so this is some... Okay, so we've got a clear panel underneath. Yeah, so you can sort of see through it. You can see the bottom of the engine. What colour would this be if you didn't leave it clear? Is it meant to be like a silver? That's, I have no idea to be honest. Oh, okay. Probably black. Right. Or something like that. I didn't realise the actual car had such a smooth under on the tray. I guess it does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, this thing did go like... Didn't it go like 250 kilometres an hour or something? Which oh, is really? insane for something 70 years old. But... Wow, well, yeah. Okay, so we've got the working steering as well, yep. which we expect. That's pretty typical to me. Typical to me. Yep. Okay, very nice. Yeah, look at that. So there's a lot of chrome yeah, featured yeah. here as well. So that's all kit chrome. I didn't re-chrome that. I usually do, but I feel like the Tamiya chrome is generally pretty good. So. Yeah. And the wheels. The wheels are really nice because the wheels are, are color-coded to the bodywork. Yeah, and you've got so the chrome showing through. I used a circle cutter to sort of like do some masking there. It was a bit difficult to get. You can sort of see, I don't really get it perfect. I, I scraped the paint off the Mercedes badge to reveal the chrome under it. Okay. 
Well, I guess that's easy enough to do, right? Because the chrome isn't affected by lack of thinness or lack of paint. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Because it's so smooth, paint doesn't really grip to it, so you can sort of just scrape it off. Well, it looks really clean. I think that's done really well. Yeah. Yeah, it looks nice. It turned out pretty good. All right, so we're going along with the chrome trim. Yes, yeah, so there's chrome all the way around the car, front and rear bumpers, bits on the side. And I think those parts really add to these. I mean, that's that's very typical of early yeah, cars, isn't exactly, it? Big bumpers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Really captures that era really well. Oh, there's some, uh, yeah, me some metal, metal transfers, transfers yeah. which are basically photo etched transfers with adhesive on them. Yeah. Fairly typical of the high quality Tamiya kits. They usually come with metal transfers. Mm. I remember when they were a new thing and a lot of people couldn't understand how to put yeah. them on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's pretty standard of, now. I've sort of grown up with them, so I'm mm. pretty used to them. But. So you've got a really nice interior here, which is all red. Yes, yeah, so this is just to me a flat red i think just the acrylic you got some furry stuff in the back there. yes it's got some red flocking it's probably um scale production flocking i think it really adds to it yeah you have to you have to flock it you can't yeah. have such a large area just bare paint and then the and red absolutely. interior that would have been vinyl or leather right uh i i think on so this is a replica of like a a restoration and I think in that car it was probably leather. I like the uh, ivory colored yeah. steering wheel. Yeah, the real car that I'm replicating did have a bit of ivory on the interior. And then also the, um, the dashboard and that card there, is that photo etch? I don't think there's any photo etch on the oh, dash. Really? Yeah, I think that's all. So, so that's the, all standard yeah, kit. Yeah, the dash came molded in chrome. Oh, wow. So I, That's really clean, isn't it? Yeah, so I mixed some Vallejo colors together to try and color match the body and then brush painted the dash because like, there's no way I was masking that off to airbrush it. I think that looks really good. But yeah, it turned out really well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you've got the, uh, the stick shift there, nice long one. Yeah. And a bit more flocking. Yeah. I think that really adds to it, having the different um, tones of red on the interior. Yeah, that's, exactly, that's much yeah. more natural, right? Because yeah. there's no way they would have had it all color matched. Yeah. Different textures too. Rear vision mirror there. Mirror yeah, I the actually like assembled the car and then realized I forgot to add the mirror in. So I had to oh, pull really? it all apart and glue, glue that in and then reassemble it. But... I can see some of the struts there for the, the gold the wings. Door, yeah. So that's all there is to it, just that sort of strut that clips in. You don't even have to glue it. Yeah, and well, it works the really well. the door just sits on it. All right, I'm going to zoom it out a bit. Okay, so let's talk about your paintwork. Yeah, so this was probably Tamiya Grey Primer, as I usually do, and then mm -hmm. SMS Turquoise. So I went for an SMS color this time. So it was fairly close to the real car that I'm replicating. I sort of uh, played around with some, like, uh, sort of pearls on top of it and whatnot, but I, I felt like this just turned out to look the best. Mm. Yeah, it definitely looks nice. It's a very classical colour from the era too, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. It definitely suits the 50s. Okay. And then on top of the paint, it was Pro Scale 2K Clear. Pro Scale. Yeah, nice. It's really smooth. Yeah, it is, yeah. And this is straight off the gun, right? Yeah, straight out of the airbrush. Mm. And that's the finish we're all looking for. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've talked about this in, in previous a discussions, times, yeah. but yeah, this is really nice. I quite like the, the, the guards too. Yeah, you can, someone makes a 3D printable wide body set, like mm. sort of resto mod style. Oh place. yes. So you can do like the really wide arches. I think which I've looks, seen that. Looks I, interesting. I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm, I'm not into it. It sort of takes away from it. I think. I'm usually a wide body person, but yep. on some particular cars, it just doesn't look right. So. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. I think you've done a spectacular job with this, Jack. I, I do like it. It's definitely one of my favorites, that's for sure. Yeah, there you go. So this is the Tamiya 24 scale 300 SL with a few extra bits and pieces from Hobby Design, built by Jack. And like your other cars, I think you're, you're doing a really good job there. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. So thanks for bringing this in, Jack. Of course, that's all right. And if you've got any questions for Jack, uh, please put them in the comments and we'll get those answered for you. And thanks for joining us again. We'll see you Jack, it's, all, it's always <laughs> interesting. And um, I mean, every project brings out something different, right? Exactly, exactly. And there's always uh, little things to look out for and stories go with it. For sure. So there you go. All right.
Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, guys. Bye.